raising capital was was difficult because investors were um, were not yet completely bought into the idea of China, and I think that really was ultimately the spark that really drove uh, large capital pools into into this part of the world. The second hard part was finding people and finding uh, the right partners and professional teams who were both Western enough to feel comfortable in a firm like Newbridge, which was really had a strong you know, US roots, to people who were also Asian enough or from the local markets to really understand not only the language, but the culture and, and have a local network. Uh, people like that were very rare in the early days of the industry. Um, and there was, you know, a sort, sort of a knock in investment in, in investor circles on hiring bankers. Uh, although the perfect, you know, most of the, the, the best hires and the early people in the industry were folks who had M&A backgrounds at major firms. Um, and then the, the, the third very difficult thing was, was buying control. Carlisle decided uh, in the mid to late 1990s that we should try to become a global organization. So we decided we would set up an buyout operation in Europe, and then as soon as that was put together, we would go to Asia. So we decided to start in Asia in the late 1990s, and we recruited a team and began to raise a fund in the late 1990s. To the extent that private equity existed, it tended to be a minority stake type of business. It was not a control business. And also, the biggest economies then were not that uh, willing to accept private equity. So China was not something we even considered at the time. In the late 1990s, we were focused on Taiwan, Korea, Southeast Asia, uh, to a large extent. India was not really in our mindset at that time. So it was a much different business and it tended to be minority stake. Now we also had a separate Japan fund and we were raising that simultaneously with our Asian fund to some extent. So we separated Japan and Asia. Well, we thought about entering the Asian market at many different points in time. The first time was really in the late 1990s during the Asian financial crisis, but at the time we had prioritized our expansion to Europe first and spent the next five years building out a European platform. We really turned our attention to Asia in earnest in the 2004-2005 timeframe. Asia was obviously booming at that point in time, the macroeconomic growth trends were quite compelling, and we thought that was the right time for us to establish our, our, our franchise in the region. The strategy was really built around three core pillars. We wanted very localized investment teams to really blend into these markets, hire the best local talent we could, to integrate that local talent into our global platform and deliver a seamless global solution to our clients in the market, and finally to bring to the table a very significant operational capability. At KKR, we call that group our capstone team. The first opportunities for Bain Capital Credit um, were probably more than a decade ago, but they were very, very op opportunistic. A single investment here, a tech company that had operations in somewhere in Asia. And uh, over time, we started doing more and more in Australia. And from Australia, we started expanding out north and uh, over the past five years have really built out our Hong Kong office, um, have local language speakers, and uh, several years ago we bought uh, J.P. Morgan's Special Situations book, their, what they called their GSOG business, Global Special Opportunities Group, which had a big Asian book, and that sort of jump-started us um, with people in Hong Kong as well as um, exposures in a lot of different countries. Well, in our Asian buyout fund, our first one, which was hard to raise, I think it was $750 million. It took us many years to get that raised. Many people were skeptical of buyouts in Asia. We did a transaction, uh, China Pacific Life, which turned out to be an extraordinary transaction. We bought a more or less bankrupt Chinese insurance company, life insurance company, and we helped turn it around and made a great deal of money for us and our investors. And as a result of that, we realized that yes, you can make a fair amount of money in Asian private equity. 
Well, I think in each of the markets that we've invested in across the region, there have been milestone transactions, which really, I think, opened up the market for us. Today, Japan is by far our busiest market for investment, and it's really the large corporate carve-out opportunity that's presenting itself for the first time. And I would say in Japan, the landmark transaction we did in Asia 2, our second fund, was Panasonic Healthcare. It was the first time a really blue-chip parent company like Panasonic decided to partner with us and trust us with one of their large non-core subsidiaries. And we've demonstrated our ability not only to improve the profitability of the business, but to conduct significant cross-border M&A. In our second year of ownership, we bought the Bayer Diabetes business in, Japan, in, in Germany and really doubled the size of that business. In our first eight years on the ground in Japan, we did one buyout in fund one. That was less than 5% of our capital. In fund two, when the market just started to open up, in the last four to five years, we've done five large corporate carve-outs. I think that there hasn't been a watershed moment in credit where all of a sudden everybody started looking to Asia. Although I do think that there has been a natural um, progression from people were comfortable in the US, then started investing more in Europe. Europe had a very severe couple of crises. There was both the GFC in 2008 and then the sovereign crisis which went from country to country to country. And as people saw that in some very, very difficult situations, if you're buying assets, if you're buying credit that's very close to the assets, um, you can make money in a bunch of diverse creditors' rights regimes. That naturally, I think, has led people to look at Asia, which is an enormous market for credit. I cannot say that I'm surprised that Asian private equity has grown exponentially since we first started because the Asian economies have been very robust and China has become the second biggest economy in the world. India is on its way to be one of the third or fourth biggest economies in the world. So it, really the private equity world now in Asia reflects what's happening in the overall economies. But it wasn't easy and many people probably forget the fact that in the late 1990s people didn't really think that you could do controlled transactions in Asia or that it would be a very good growth business for private equity firms from the United States coming in and investing there. Now it's a very good business for global firms, very good business for indigenous firms. When you're building an asset manager in any region, but especially outside your home territory, you need to balance two objectives. One is to transfer the DNA and the intellectual capabilities that have made you successful, and recognizing that there's local customs, skills, and, lang and language needs that you need to um, respect. I think a lot of companies have expanded with an attitude, hi, I'm from New York, you're happy to meet me, and uh, haven't really recognized the local culture and custom. What we try to do at Bain Capital is make sure that when we expand, we have some people who have worked at the firm for a long time go and hire and build an office that is predominantly people from the region. I think that's the best way to respect local customs, it's the best way to develop sourcing networks, and obviously the language skills are critically important. I think there are really two major constraints to building scale in Asia today. It's a lot of different markets, so it's not one monolithic region today. The cultural differences, the language differences, the political, legal differences across all of these markets are dramatic. So you're, what you're really talking about is building scale in each of the major countries that you want to do business in. So for us, it was really getting scale in terms of human capital, finding great talent, and the pool of talent in Asia within private equity is a lot less developed than the United States, for instance. So finding that really senior experience investment talent was much harder to do. And then secondarily, once you have the talent in place, really being able to find the great local partners, the great families, the great management teams that you want to back in each of these markets.